Now then, welcome to the latest edition of RedArmy.tv. And we all have smiles on our face. Two successive away wins. Watch it. You wouldn't have paid for it, would you? Well, I would have done, actually. I'd have given the Borough a tenner to have two wins. Um, joining me in the studio, Chris Joseph, the honorary president of the Middlesbrough Supporters Forum and former uh, guru of the Middlesbrough Official Supporters Club and all things Borough. Welcome, mate. Hello there. Got royalty in TC. We have royalty <laughs> in. And, of course, a man who... He doesn't look a day. How, how many years is it since I last saw you, TC? Oh, must be about 15, 20. Must, yeah, 15, 20 years. He doesn't look a day older. How do you manage it? Is it oil of you uh, or something? I think it's called uh, Carlings. Carlings. <laughs> okay, you rub that on your face on a regular basis. Do you still have a beer in the Tiger and stuff like um, that? Yeah. Not as much now. We're usually up Eston Way. And the Woodman is the, probably the, the pub now That's that the people go into. Yeah. Yeah. Just in case Sign of the some, times. Just in case there's some youngsters watching. TC, big number seven on his back, up and down that, 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 that side next to the chicken run. He was best mates with everybody in the chicken run at Ayrson Park. Fantastic player for the Boroughs. Great to have you in the studio. Thanks mate. very much, Stephen. Great to see you Thank again. You. And I still haven't forgiven you for that trip to Germany while you invited <laughs> everybody into my room to mean. throw my bed out of the window from the second floor and he, he, he stitched me up like a kibber, but I'll, I'll, I'll forgive him for once. <laughs> right, let's get, on, let's get on to the footy, fellas. Um, whole City. We were there, of course, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, good performance from the Borough. Chris, I'll start with you because you were there, you were watching it, you were standing just a few seats away from me because we don't sit at away games. Uh, what did you make of the display? I thought it was really exciting. It was, it was the best I've seen in a long, long time from the Borough. Um, I, th I was heartened by it. Um, I think um, we've been through a very difficult patch over the last season and uh, we're all expecting miracles out of Monk immediately out of his, his new squad. I would argue that we, at the moment, uh, are still in the process of sorting out the squad and turning it into a team. And I think he's working on what will be the best team. Um, I, I was very pleased with what I saw last night and I enjoyed it. Mm, cracking stuff. TC, I'm, I'm sure I remember in the annals of history and in the grey matter that is in my head falling right. out regularly now. Uh, I remember you, Chris, in the turf at Boothbury Park and, mm. and us doing Hull, but in recent years it's not been a happy hunting ground for the borough. Um, do, play, do players think like that when you go into games thinking, oh, horses for courses, we don't get much here? Yeah, probably a little bit, but you're, you're so wound up uh, within what you're going to do when you before you go out on the pitch and as you say but players change you know i mean the teams change and i, th I think i don't think you look at the history of, of other teams mm. you just say look let's give them a hard time when you go out onto the pitch because once you walk out onto the white line there's no excuses there's not over that white line there's nobody to help you you've got to go up and do it yourself and i, and I thought we had a couple of successes against hull and it, it nowadays it's it's very very I don't know what to say about nowadays because we're expecting big things of the borough and then when they go and let us down it's all deflated again and we go back to our own ways of oh, what are we going to do is it going to be another bad season is what's the manager exactly the manager and that's what it just seems to be a merry-go-round of that well we'll come back onto that in a bit yeah. more depth very shortly but let's get the fans views uh, we did have the coach of course going down there the uh, the Red Army TV coach going down to uh, the KCOM and uh, afterwards, this is what you had to say about the Borough performance. Great win. Came over second there. A bit sluggish. Got caught. Battled well. Tremendous rebound. Absolutely tremendous, mate. Brilliant. Unbelievable performance. 3-1. Not brilliant, but solid. All the way. Bring on the Mackhams. So it was a good performance. But down and uh, played really well. And uh, six points out of six, nine out of nine, come what this time Sunday, bring on the rats. Cracking 3-1 win, had it on my bet, thank you Borough, just won me 100 quid, get in. And an absolutely uh, cracking atmosphere on the coach going to the game and particularly coming back from the game and I think one or two were uh, lubricated shall we say in certain ways. And we are taking the coach to Leeds as well so we'll give you more details later in the show for the Red Army coach to lead. Chris, uh, good win against Reading. Cracking performance against Hull. Uh, six points out of two successive away games. Has the corner been turned? I think it's early days to say that the corner's been turned. I mean, obviously we're going in the right direction. I mean, we, can, we need as many points as we can get because we're, we're already way behind the leaders. I think, um, I think there's still a lot of points to play for. Um, 
I think it's, I'm not even sure, I think it's 90, 90 odd points. About to play. 9 million mates. Yeah, 90 odd <laughs> points to play for. So it's still, it's still early days. But I, I, was, I was heartened by last night. I really was. I mean, they, we, were lot, we showed a lot of grit last night, which we haven't done over recent games. And um, we won ugly at Reading, but at the same time, who cares sometimes? We, you need to grind out a result. Mm, I, re I remember winning not so ugly at uh, Swansea, and I think TC did an overhead kick. Um, but let's focus on the present, TC. Oh, yeah. um, strong challenges going in, players rolling their sleeves up and getting stuck in. A lot of play, a lot of players, borough players, harrying, hassling, closing down space. Is that what we need as well as a bit of talent? Yeah, I think not once in a while, but every week they've got to be up for the game. They're getting well paid for it. We go back to the money situation, but at the end of the day, that determines everything. You know, you you tend to, you tend to think that these lads have been uh, they've been bought for a lot of money. They've got to show something, Davy. They have. They've got to show something. At the end of the day, it's it's like you you hire a, a foreman to do a job and he doesn't do the job, and you highly pay him for it and he doesn't do it. That's disappointment. It's the same with the borough. We're disappointed. You know, you can't buy somebody with £10 million pound who'd rather sit on the bench and come on now and again and have a, a, a fleeting appearance. You've got to buy people with a bit of quality. Quality will win you games. And it's my personal opinion here. I might go against some of the Borough fans here, but we haven't enough of quality. We really? haven't. We have not to push To push to win no, the league? No. If you watched the game against Cardiff, we were there to win. I, I, thought, I seriously thought we were going to beat them. And you see the first 20 minutes, I could have went home and give you the score. I said, I said there was only one team going to score, and that was Cardiff. They were so good against us, and I'm saying, we should be playing like that. But if you haven't got the players to play like that, then you're in trouble. Do you, you, think, do you think they've had a good kick up the backside then after the Cardiff I think game? they Is have. Is that why we're now seeing exactly. better performance? Exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, they've had a kick up the backside. We've had two good results. And mind you, we've, we've got to say, well, look, What's our next two or three games before Christmas? Because it's usually fine. They get all the, the comedians come on at Christmas. Oh, they'll go down the same as what the borough always do. <laughs> you know what I mean? We get that every year. And you think, well, look, do you not think that they, the players know that? They, they're, they're not doing it on purpose. At the end of the day, they're out trying. I mean, I, I think now you've seen one of the better performances. What, off Chris? No. Oh, right. Okay. Chris has told me he's went to Hull. He's seen one of the better performances from Middlesbrough. Yeah, now, decent. they've got to produce that every week. If they don't, then we're not going to get a count. We're not going to count. I think the Cardiff game, I, I came away from the Cardiff game very disappointed. Um, same, same reasons as, what Terry, as yeah. Terry was saying. But I found, uh, I, I came away and I, and, I, and I sent a message to somebody saying this was... Uh, uh, today we saw uh, a, a Borough were a squad and they were a team and that was the difference and I found last night that we were actually a good team mm. and now I think he's, he's picking, he knows now, he's beginning to formulate what is his best team. Uh, I do think um, the presence of Ayala and Gibson at the back now as a, as a partnership there, um, it, it is a tried and tested partnership. And um, he's realised that should, that should exist in the team. No, this is good stuff, fellas. We'll, we'll have some more of this in a second. Let's just have a quick break from the chat here to get your thoughts on social media. And it has a bit of a feel of a manager-esque, shall we say, feel about the social media. Here's Matt with the details. Right, let's catch up with your social media comments in regards to the whole game this week. Starting off with Gary Monk. He said back-to-back -back away wins and another fantastic response from the team up the borough. Ian Smith said Monk faced plenty of criticism before these two victories. Only right he's now given his fair share of credit for them. Hashtag Borough. Andrew said Monk being slated for having the same opinion of Banford as every manager bar in AK. Hope he comes back, but Tav obviously deserves it more. Hashtag Borough. And finally, Jared Allison. We're going to keep you to this, lad. If we beat Sunderland and Leeds, I will write an open letter of apology to Gary Monk for bad mouth him on social media. Hashtag UTB. We want to see that letter. Right, uh, keep your social media coming into us here at Borough Red Army. Back to you, Dave. So there you go. There's your, uh, your thoughts uh, uh, via social media, including Gary Monk as well. Which I'm sure he watches. I'm sure he watches. Um, we've got about a minute left before we're going to take a break, fellas. Chris, uh... I asked you earlier, have we turned the corner? You said probably too early. But what do you make of the change between the displays from what we saw against Cardiff to, to what we've seen in the last couple of games? I, th I think we, as I say, going back to the Gibson-Ayala partnership, um, 
we need us we need to have a solid defence, and I think that gives us the core of the That's solid. That's the springboard. The springboard for the solid defence is the solid defence that we that I believe we will have if we keep that partnership together. Okay, well we'll come back um, after the break. We've just got to earn some money. Um, don't forget you can get your comments in. Um, Hashtag Red Army TV. Hashtag Red Army TV. If you want to get your comments in on the show, we are live on Facebook Live, of course. Um, so get them in. Hashtag Red Army TV. And after the break, we'll be chewing the cud that bit more about the renewed borough vigour. See you then. Welcome back, RedArmy.tv, uh, on Facebook Live, on YouTube, on social media, on Mid in Teesside, we're everywhere. Great watch. Stuff. Yeah, there you go. And on the couch is Terry Cochran, <laughs> uh, former Borough star. Um, fellas, what's good to see is we're creating lots of chances. Um, we do see Britta Sombolonga miss a few, but he's, he's grabbed eight goals so far. With a, I think we're roughly a third of the way into the season, maybe not even that TC. So maybe a, a lad there who's under 20-odd goals for the season. How, how important is that to a team? Yeah, you'd look at him and he'd say, well, he is a front man, but you need to play somebody with him to take a little bit of the hurt. Because you don't like this single striker yeah, up front? I don't, I don't. I never did because, you know, I mean, you've got two or three marking him. He didn't get a chance again. I keep coming back to the Cardiff game, but they marked him out of the game as such. But he gets in the right positions at the right time. He had a bad injury at Forest, and I think he's still taking time. You know, they, they, they sort of way had him for a seat, nearly a seat, and he was scoring nearly every mm. other week. But then all of a sudden he got injured, then dropped him out, and then he come back, and he took taking him time to get back in. And I think it, it, it's still taking time for him to adjust. To the, the you know to just to the new team yeah and I think he's done well I mean you can't say he hasn't because he scored that's what you buy him for he scored goals so at the end of the day he's done his job he has to maintain that to keep us in with a shout because if 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 I mean we, we brought we brought a few players here you know with centre forwards and 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 didn't really do it I would have loved to, the, the 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 borough to keep Nugent I think yeah. Nugent would have been you know, he would have been good with us some Belonga. Yeah, who has scored goals as yeah, well that's since, it. since yeah. he moved on. And he's um, for Derby, yeah. Yeah, just got to say hi to Martin Day in Texas. He's watching us live in Texas. Hey, mate, good to have you, along, have you along with us. Chris, who's caught the eye? Is it, is it an Asambalonga goal scoring machine? Is it a Braithwaite creating? I mean, he looks to be a. a, I think, a I think, who's I think, caught the eye recently? Uh, I agree with what Terry's saying about Asambalonga being on his own. He, he can't be on his own. Um, he, he, he was, I was in the game against Cardiff. He was having to come back and do what Negredo was having to do all last season, which is actually come into the midfield and try and win the ball because nobody was actually getting it to him. But I think the. Uh, the presence of Braithwaite now. Braithwaite's a very creative player, and he's very fast, very dynamic. He scored last night mm. against Hull, and he and he alongside Asamba Longa is going to be very potent indeed. And I also think um, it's nice to see that Borough have actually bought a striker who isn't frightened to miss, but will have a go and create like Asamba Longa. When you look at him at Forest, he, he could have had a bag full, couldn't yeah. he? He could have had four that game, but just lady luck didn't mm. shine mm. on that occasion. Um, obviously, happy scenes for the fans. You know, <laughs> doing Reading 2 0, 3 1 at Hull, which has been a bit of a bit of a nightmare of a place for us to go to. Uh, we thought we'd we thought we'd just take a camera on the inside of the the Red Army coach coming back from Hull. Shall we say um, um, a little bit of a celebratory mood? Have a look at this. And we'll dip back into the coach very, very shortly as well. Uh, some great renditions, shall we say, coming from the back seat. If anybody had a bang a little bit earlier, we've got fireworks going on outside the studio, so apologies for that. Um, got to, uh, Chris, let's um, pick up on, uh, on Grant Ledbetter. I mean, a couple of penalties in successive games now. Um, took that one away quite nicely against Hull. It was, uh, it was right in the top corner. It was fantastic. Uh, we've seen Grant come back into the side. We've seen the side start to improve. I'm not surprised. Is it... I'm not surprised. I, I don't think it's coincidence. I think he adds. He's a steely captain of a team, and he knows. He's. he's he, yeah. He's. He might be a little bit long in the tooth, but he knows. 
He knows, he knows the way of actually getting his players organised and they follow him. I mean, last night there was a huge gap before he actually took that, se that second, that penalty against Hull. But he didn't, he, he didn't bat an eyelid, he planted it just like he always does. He's a, he's a very good captain and he's a very good penalty taker. Mm. Do you see how important is a captain, is a, is a leader? On the field? It depends where he is. I mean, you get goalkeepers who are captains, and I, I don't understand that. They're not really out on the field. But Ledbetter, I, I, I'm, I can't get away with Ledbetter. You can't? No pace. He's got no pace. And teams will frighten us with, with the pace they've got. We have to get people in there, creative play. We need a creative player who, who, who start, start the proceedings and get the boys playing a little bit and got a change of pace. Mm. I think this is where Breathwaite, I think mm. Chris has touched on Breathwaite. I think he's not, he could be the one, but I don't, you, you've got to have defenders uh, in midfield and creative players in midfield. I think Ledbetter, as you say, is long in the tooth. I think this will be his last, his last farewell or something like that there this season because you need pace. You can't have Ledbetter sitting there holding things together you, you, you and, and can, Breathwaite in front. You, you can, but it showed on. Uh, you, you don't need it. At, I don't think you need it at home. Mm. You, think, you need the attack at I, home. I think he wins the ball as well, quite nicely. You know what I mean? He wins the ball in midfield. Mm. He's not frightened of going for a tackle. And people are more actually the opposition are actually quite mm. frightened of him. Mm. Um, and um, he, he's he's known for his good tackling, and he and uh, he wins the ball, and then he and then he's very good now at distribu distribu distributing distributing it. Sorry. I can't say that, you know. I've only had your water yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't he only me. offers us water. Uh, we slipped something in it before, so don't worry about that, man. Uh, we talked about fireworks going on outside. Um, on the coach coming back, the Red Army coach, Build a Bonfire was one of the songs. That was a, a popular rendition. Uh, have a look at this. Build a bonfire, build a bonfire, put the Johnnies on the top, put the Mackens in the middle and burn the f***ing lot. It was a fantastic atmosphere on the coach, but you always get one, don't you? Uh, and it would be really remiss of us if we didn't give you this rendition of Build a Bonfire. Build a fire, build a fire, <laughs> put the cheese on the top, put the chicken in the middle, let me go. Fantastic. I can't remember who it was who sang it, but we got your own camera. Well done to Mark as well. Uh, the Red Army cameraman, he managed to grab that one perfectly. Fellas, we've got a, a not-so-unimportant um, game against uh, one of the old rivals. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Sunderland's yeah. coming up, yeah. Teasy. What do you remember about battles with Sunderland in the past? It's blood and thunder, you know, and all form goes out the window. You know, we can't say that we'll beat... Uh, oh, they're off form, they're dead. Derby games are, are different in the North East. What happened in your time? What do you remember from your time, Derby games? Um... Sunderland, we beat them 1-0 up there and uh, John Neal and we went back to, I remember going to the studios in Newcastle to actually, you know, replay the game mm. and I think they beat us 10-0 <laughs> it was edited that much, they beat us 10-0 I couldn't believe that it was edited so much for Sunderland and I thought we played we played very, very well and we won 1-0 but it, it, it's always the same type of thing, you're under a little bit of pressure the fans want you to win so you go out and you put that little bit extra, and I think you've got to do that. If you don't, you, you, you'll fall short, but it should be a good game on, on, on Sunday. And I, I, I hope the Borough beats Sunderland. You know, they'll come off, they've got no yeah. manager now. And what do you say when they lose the manager? They win the next game. Well, we'll focus on that you know? in, in, in a Jiff. Just before the last couple of minutes, we'll chat about Sunderland. Uh, time for us to catch up with uh, the goings on around Borough fans. Here's Heidi with Borough in 60 seconds. Boris Martin Braithwaite has been named in the Danish national team as they announced their squad for the World Cup qualification playoff against the Republic of Ireland. The first leg is to be played in Copenhagen on the 11th of November. A great performance at the Riverside saw Boris under 23 extend their lead at the top of the PL2 table to five points with a 3-1 win against Wolves on Sunday. Tickets for Boris' away game to Leeds on the 19th of November goes on sale to the general public on the 1st of November. Red Army will be providing the transport to Ellen Road. Middlesbrough official supporters club is proud to announce the launching of their own ale. The UTB ale will be available at the Six Medals pub from noon this coming Friday. And a warning to any Borough fan who has bought a Riverside Stadium jigsaw from the club shop. Open and check as it might be a Celtic one. And that is Borough in 60 seconds. Thands for that, Heidi. Chris, so Sunderland, what are you expecting? 
I expect we'll win. To be honest, I'm not. Um, I'm not in any way faced by Sunderland. I'm, I'm a bit disappointed they did sack Simon Grayson. I thought he was doing a terrific job down there. <laughs> so, uh, but no, I um, I just hope um, you know all our players uh, step up to the plate, which I think they will. I think Gary Monk will realise the seriousness and the importance of the game to the fans. Um, and it uh, would be great to see a good derby. We haven't seen one of those in a long time. Mm. Do you see as a player winning runs are important, aren't they? They build confidence. Of course they do, yeah. So if we've gone and won two away games on the belt and we do do Sunderland, yes, mm. people would expect us to do Sunderland because they're struggling. But from a player's perspective, how important would that be for us to get that winning run going? I, th I think their confidence will, will start to start to creep in, creep in and all of a sudden the, you might see... I mean, I, I've called them ordinary in the anything. Ordinary players respond to confidence sometimes, mm. and then you get a different type of player. And I think that's that's what it's all about, Davy. You know, you you could go on, and you know, in the morning time, and you go into the changing room, and you could be full of it, and then go out onto the pitch and go out like a damp spritz. And people say, "Oh, you had a bad game," and you say, "Well, why?" And you say, "Well, I can't understand that." Come one. on, then let's have predictions. What you're expecting, scoreline wise? Two 0 Two nil. Yeah, I'm with two nil as well. 2-0 yeah. as well. 2-0 yeah. right across the couch. Mm. Well, I'm not going to break tradition then, am I? I'm going to go 2-0 as well. Fellas, delighted to see you in the studio. Thank you very much. Great being part of it. No and problem. We'll catch you next week on Red Army TV.